the At Your Instant Podcast is brought to you by Comic Town. Check them out at www.comictown.net or search for Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. That's insane. I just I just turned on the episode while you guys are still talking about some baseball. Oh, hello and welcome to at your end step. It was a very uh, casual and impromptu opening to our, our lovely show that we have here. Baseball edition. Yeah, yeah it's super baseball edition. I, so I'm going to do my best not to be loud and angry. Um, but my my pitcher didn't have a great first inning for the Indians, and uh, if they continue to do poorly, I'll be angry and may have a slip of the tongue, and if they come back and do well, I may also have a slip of the tongue, so I'm going to try and keep it calm. If you make me have to edit this episode more than I have to, then I will be very sad. Be a sad boy. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I understand. May you may you uh, have much adulation, uh, but may it just be curse-free. <laughs> hey, Morgan's back. I am. I had a wonderful honeymoon. Uh, I also was never really gone, technically. <laughs> My streak no, still had, had to get your little you were little gone. Thing in there. <laughs> like that's not how that I mean, works. but like, was I? Y- yes. But yes. like, I was yes. still on the episode, though. Yeah. You, what? But I was. What do we? Uh, what do we talk about? That stuff. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, way to support the the episode. I mean, podcast. I just haven't listened to it yet. I'll get around to it. I got a lot of podcasts I gotta listen to. I got a lot of people that, you know, influence how the show goes, you know. I gotta learn from other people. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident that you guys did well. Uh, we didn't get any negative feedback about it, so. That's good. I guess that's that's good. Yeah. No one hated it. <laughs> But anyway, we have another fun-filled episode for you guys this uh, this week. A um, few community topics to t- uh, to touch on, and then uh, uh, some events that happened over the weekend. We had a couple of GPs, and then uh, we'll we'll touch briefly on Eternal Weekend. It was in Columbus, which is awesome, but none of us have Eternal Weekend sort of dollars. So uh, Mike and I will tell you about the drafts that we participated in uh, <laughs> over the weekend, and that. Uh, and then we have our, our typical wrap-up stuff. Um, some uh, events going on this weekend in the local area and stuff like that. So, uh, but first and foremost, let's get into the uh, community segment. So, we do have the full uh, commander spoiler. So we we kind of know what's what uh, all about that. And um, uh, anything that you guys want to call out, touch on as far as cards in the set. I know that you know this is where we get some you know pushed commons and uncommons for uh, Dave's cube, and we definitely <laughs> are are getting a few. Um, some some overpriced cards that are land cyclers or basic land cyclers, which is pretty cool. Um, so those m- might be making it in. Hey, land cycling is sweet. I agree. It's never dead. Um, yeah, the card that makes the blue white card that makes four flyers for yeah, five. That card's, that card's, <laughs> card's that card is sweet. The card's pretty good. Um, and uh, there's what the there's a red black one that. Return something gives it haste for like six, right? Yes, it has basic land cycling. It has basic land cycling, and then there's the green, the green white one that destroys two artifacts and or enchantments. Yeah, apparently that was a reprint. Is it really? I don't know. Oh, it, okay. it was probably in some commander set. That I don't know about, but hmm. I, I've not noticed that card before. I, I, I don't know if that one. That one doesn't strike me as immediately good enough for cube though, because I don't right. know how no. often you have no. two targets. Exactly. But... Yeah. No, I, I wanted it to uh, to be better that. It, it of course isn't, but um, anything else that you want to uh, to bring up as far as you know cards kind of coming in? I know that these um, from everything that I've been reading that these decks on on base with uh, the as far as like the cards that are in it with price are all fairly uh, potent. Yeah, they're they're all worth you know they're what MSRP is what thirty five thirty five and they have about a hundred dollars yeah, worth of like, cards. Some of them a little bit more. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I will say I do like Ancient Excavation, possibly for cube. That's the blue-black uh, draw spell where you draw a card for each card in your hand and discard a card for each card drawn. It's an instant. Yeah, it's... I mean, I could just play Careful Consideration, which is like probably just better, right? It doesn't have land cycling. It doesn't have land cycling, but... I think it's actually pretty important. But that's yeah. just a thought. So, because I think this card's like really sweet. You can basically land cycle it, and then you can play like your Archaeomancer or your Eldrazi effect to get it back later. So, yeah, sure. There are a lot of sweet cards for like just regular cubes as well. 
Like if you're into the like four color legends or some sweet ones, like oh, the yeah. guy gives all your spells cascade if he hits your opponent. Oh yeah, um, or, or the the the, the uh, Atraxus or whatever the the one that yeah. voice of the Praetors. Yeah, the one that or Atraxa. I'm sorry that you proliferate every turn. Mm. It's pretty good with planeswalkers from uh, <laughs> uh, what I understand of the game of Magic. <laughs> they have counters on them, and then uh, you know some of them can get kind of kind of crazy. Whoa! You just play doubling season in that deck. Ah, just ah, just so good, <laughs> so great. <laughs> Anyway, um, but I, you know what? I think that this is kind of a, a cool way to potentially get people uh, into um, Commander this go around. I think the monocolor decks that they had were kind of uh, limiting, and then like the two color decks weren't very exciting, even though they're enemy colors. So four color is kind of exciting. It kind of gives you a little bit of taste of everything, and then with the new partner system that they have, um, you can actually, you know sort of uh, you know get a set of them and kind of make which it, whatever you kind of want you know, as far as color combinations go. So I think that's pretty cool. And I think that um, it, it encourages people to, like, look for ways of, like, trading cards within the, the sets and everything like that. So it's pretty it's pretty nifty. The, the one thing I will say, they need to make these basic lands, like, available outside. Of- <laughs> oh, yeah. We talked about, we touched on this a little bit last week. Uh, but, yeah, you got to make some kind of special foil versions of these or something. They're, they're all great. Um, they really got some awesome people to make the basic lands for this set. So... Um, if you haven't checked it out, I'm sure that um, you uh, have by now, but you definitely should if you haven't. So, Absolutely. Yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm excited. I might actually try to pick one of these up at some point. And... It's it's tempting. I'm not sure which one I'd actually want to get it, but it's tempting. Attracts. Well, I'll, I'll get something different so that we could try. See, I, I kind of want to make a um, a, a red-white uh, commander deck. Gotcha, gotcha. And they they have the two um, the two partner commanders that you, you could be like make a pretty good red white deck with. So sure. may, maybe look into that. So I like it. All right, well, let's move on. Sure. So uh, I assume that you guys, uh, you know, as a follow up, you know, talked about the the cake header situation. So uh, there is more development on, on that uh, that has uh, happened, um, and it looks like uh, at this point in time, uh, Card Hoarder has decided to uh, part ways with uh, Kent Ketter and let them uh, sort of release him from the, the team uh, as it stands right now. So um, due to uh, what has happened and apparently some, uh, Dave, you were saying there were some other things that have been, that have come to light that were not, that have not been made public as to, as to why, but may have influenced the uh, card hoarder's decision. Right. Yeah. They said, you know, based on just the one incident that happened at uh, SCG Milwaukee, Based on that, you know, they were going to keep him. And then apparently some other stuff came out that nobody really knows about at this point. So who really knows? Uh, but they, you know, decided to, to part ways. So it's 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 unfortunate that, you know, kind of one incident that may or may not have been, you know, it, it, unintentional uh, kind of just snowballed into this whole giant ordeal. Um, yeah, the the... The underground keyboard or keyboard dojo cage fighters. I got this one, I think, uh, a little wrong. Now, I, I don't know what other stories were told. I don't know what other information there is. I, I you know that's not f- for me. I will say that reading through comments, a lot of them have been things like, "Yeah, my buddy played against him once, and this seemed fishy." And if card hoarders taking that sort of like anecdotal evidence about people who are salty that they lost games uh, as a reason to get rid of a person, uh, I'd hope they'd be really careful about that slippery slope. And I really hope that like players who like actively were fighting, like going out and commenting and doing you know the witch hunt, if you will, uh, recognize that all it takes is one future match for it to be you. That's it. You played a lot of people in the past. It takes one future match. You make a mistake, and it could be you. And he didn't. Here's the crazy thing. He didn't, de- didn't get DQ'd. He didn't get you know kicked out of the tournament for cheating. The judge ruled in his favor. Like I don't understand how this yeah, leads to this. It, it, yeah, it was just a, an odd thing. I mean, I can see why people would be upset about it, but I mean, I was just like, oh, okay, that was a thing that happened, and then I just kind of moved on. But apparently, a lot of other people didn't move on from no. it, and. Yeah, it just became more and more of a thing. And, you know, I, I do understand it from Card Hoarder's perspective. I mean, the team is there to promote the store. And if you're bringing negative attention, you know, that's going to drive away customers. And that's, you know, that defeats the purpose of having the team. So, you know, I, whether or not uh, any of these other things, you know, have any merit, um, 
it's just bad publicity for a card hoarder to keep him on the team. I, so. I guess so. I just I wish people would would stop with this trash. Like, you, you what? You just holding stories in your back pocket for people? Like, like you didn't? This person didn't get you know banned for cheating. You didn't in, in, initiate an investigation with a judge. You didn't go through. Like you're just waiting now so you can have fun on the internet roasting people. I, well, I could, you know, once once there's there's an actual you know ac- accusation out there, then I can you know lend further support. Uh, to that accusation, but my my claim I, is not you know um, carries enough weight behind it, but along with a bunch of other claims, and, it does. And, you know, and, and so honestly, it's sort of like a, a class action. As you're lawsuit. saying that, you know, even in my mind, I see the parallels to other uh, other uh, you know stories, and I, and I get that. I, I you know I, I do understand that, but I I guess I'm looking at it as as the medium is a little bit different. That we're not, I, I, you know, I, I, again, maybe some of the other stories are truly like like really negative and if they are you know i guess good on card hoarder for uh you being you know having the integrity not to try and just go out and crush somebody after the fact but uh this just seems a little strange and uh sort of frustrating and you know honestly to card hoarder i I will say you know you have people on your team who have their own baggage still uh so i i would respect their decision more if they didn't already accept people who have had similar issues you know what I mean? And I don't want I don't want to do the trash anybody else because I'm not going to sit there and play that game. We've talked about that before, but it is it is hard for that company to walk out of this looking very clean when they've already been accepting of other negative aspects. If that makes sense. So I don't know. It's frustrating. I I, I did message uh, uh, Kent and he said he is going to continue grinding. So yeah, I wouldn't expect him to to stop playing games. And I, I think like it's a uh, it, it's just sort of a, a poor situation and. Uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of situations that a lot of pros have that have happened to them that are very similar to what happened to Kent, and maybe theirs weren't, you know, broadcast for the world to see. You know, uh, so it, it's it would it would not be shocking that there would be you know a large amount of you know professional magic players, grinders, what have you, that have gotten into these. Uh, potentially dicey looking, you know, uh, angle shooting situations, and have had. Um, the, you know, the call go the same way that it happened to Kent. And it's just, you know, since Kent was public that he got, you know, crucified for it. So, and that's just how the cookie crumbles. And it's unfortunate. We've all, you know, uh, met Kent, talked to Kent at, at this, to some degree uh, at some point in time. So maybe it's just because we know the person, we have a different opinion of it. Um, and maybe it's because we haven't, you know, we, we don't have one of those stories of him, you know, uh, being less than savory uh, that, yeah, we we can't see it as much as uh, as 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 other people do. You know, I try to keep uh, you know opinions fair and balanced uh, uh, here at, 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 at and um, here at, at your end step. But, at your end step, uh, fair and balanced. So it, it 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 did feel a little bit like piling on with this one. Oh yeah, I, and I will say like you can go back and listen to. I mean, this is a couple of years ago now, but my first interactions with Kent weren't great. Like I was on, I was I said definitely said on the cast, but talked to the guy more after that, and he definitely grew on me. And I feel like. Um, you when you just like pick on a you know a person that you've seen in the public and you've decided like this is what this I, I don't know I don't know I, I just think that um, uh, this is a situation where uh, people who may or may not have had a vendetta knew that they could do something so I think a lot of times when this happens um, yeah, they, nothing oh. happens of it because only wizards can be the person people that do something about it but they could impact him by having him lose his sure, sponsorship sure. yeah. People, so people coming out of the woodwork, yeah. You know, I, but I, I, I don't know. I, I guess when I see this, it, it makes me feel just like a little queasy, just because like you know, I, I mentioned on the, the cast last week, you know, a, a really uh, awkward interaction I had at a PBTQ that involved you know missed triggers, uh, and, and like you know, it was it wasn't on camera, but like I definitely know that there is a person uh, who probably you know probably isn't a big fan of me after that. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because the Indians are just so bad in the outfield today. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> But anyways, uh, you know, they may not have a great you know vision of me, and I've been on camera a number of times, and I put myself out publicly on this cast, and you know, as the rest of you guys do, and like it worries me. So what? Do I have an awkward interaction with an opponent, and it happens on camera, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you're like, scum. Like I'm just the worst person in the yeah. world. Like that's what uh, that's that's it was seemingly what our community has devolved into, and um, you know, these these witch hunts can have. Be, be fruitful and and can do things that uh, do benefit the community but sometimes they devolve into this where like it's literally seemingly you know people um trying to be petty about a situation that you know by the standard the dci had already determined what the outcome of that was like 
the DCI, the, the judge there made a call and the call was followed and that that's what happened. So now since that wasn't good enough, uh, people feel like they had to you sure. know, bring it out to the, the light of day and, and get results of some persuasion, which the results were, you know, Kent being, you know, lobbed off of, of card order. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll just leave it at this. I mean, it, what, all, all it comes down to is what the perception is. You know what I mean? If whether or not, uh, you know, there are a, a ton of other stories out there, the perception is that he's kind of a scummy angle shooter. And, you know, whether that's unfair or not coming from this one incident, like that's the perception that's out there and card hoarder can't continue to have somebody on their team that has that perception. Again, and I would still say that maybe coming from another organization with other representatives, that would make sense. It doesn't here. So, but that's neither here nor yeah. there, I guess. Uh, and I, and I don't say that, like, I don't say that saying that they should do anything else as far as their players, but I think it's, it's interesting that they, I don't know the way they made that decision. And then it just, it seems odd. I now, think it doesn't uh, incentivize people to be on teams and to have teams because magic isn't a clean game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's maybe that's true. So if I'm going to be on a team, but then I have a weird interaction like that, like this, that's broadcast, and then people are just going to like crucify me, then why do I even want to? Why do I want to invest into it? If you're just going to kick me off because these things happen in Magic, like you can't deny that these things happen. No, you have you have two people who are both trying to win at a game that has really really intricate specific rules. Yeah, and that have room for error. You know, it's not like uh, you know, it's not like Magic Online where this happens like this, and, and you know, it's it's people that need to you know communicate effectively. And if that doesn't happen, then the the game kind of falls apart, and the DCI is there, the judges are there to help put it back on track. So if I get a judge call and the DCI, you know, sides a certain way, but I'm a bad guy because of, you know, what I did. Then why do I even like want to be involved in a team that if that happens, then I'm going to be removed from that. There's no margin for error to the, the, you know, greater mass right. of, of magic superiority people. Like, yeah, you're there. not allowed to make a mistake. No, because, because they all play cheap. perfect and they never make, they never <laughs> angle shoot. They never, they never do things like that. They're never scummy people. Correct. So uh, it, it's just annoying. And, um, it's a hard thing to do because sometimes sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's just so bad. Um, so you can be I can understand people being of, of two minds about it and um, we've we've definitely been on both sides of the fence as far as like these things happening. But I think we just feel bad because you know Kent and it's a uh, you know a poor thing to happen. And that's possible. Maybe we come off as biased, and if we do, I apologize. But I I, I think we've we've celebrated. Um, when the the witch hunts have been successful and have caught really consistent cheaters, but you didn't, unless you have a lot of evidence that you aren't putting all over Reddit, which doesn't sound like the magic community. It sounds purely anecdotal, and you you, you messed up this time. So yeah. that's and my I, stance. I just say like uh, typically when uh, those things happen and cheaters are caught, it's it's a DCI that's involved. It's a DCI right. handing out sanctioning. It's not this you know mob of people that are forcing card hoarder to make decisions that may they may or may not want to do for image. So yeah. Anyway, I, yeah. yeah. I just want to say I I disagree with what he did and I thought it was bad. So oh no 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 I don't I, know that I, it was I, a quote unquote mistake because he kind of knew what he was doing. So no no in I, a way I, I, he we talked about that last week though. Yeah, I think that's, that's he, he deserves some backlash for this, but I think it went a little overboard. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Fair enough. So. Fair enough. I think. You make it. I think the first communication they had, where it's like we don't condone this sort of action, and we have expressed with our, you know, our, you know, people on our team that this is not something that you guys need to be do doing going forward. But so, but apparently that wasn't enough for a lot of people. Anyway, uh, the last thing we need to talk on is probably a pretty big thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time on that, but I, well, you know, that that's the thing that. <sighs> There, there's a lot of opinions about so, um, but there's even more probably opinions about this. Uh, so, uh, 2017 uh, SCG tour changes and in-store program changes um, have been announced, and they were announced by uh, Star City Games owner um, Pete, Pete Hoffling, 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 Hoffling. Hoffling. Hi, yeah, Hoffling. Uh Good old Pete Hoffling. No, Pete Hoffling. <laughs> um, on Monday, so yesterday, and um, basically kind of laid out the the future of the tour um, and sort of the, you know, some of the big takeaways from that, I believe, are, you know, we, we do see uh, a lessened amount of legacy events. I believe there's only two uh, legacy, uh, you know, tour events oh. or opens. Is there, there's two? Is there two? Is there only there's just one? Two, two invitationals. 
What are you talking about? I was talking about <laughs> legacy events. Technically, there are two. Oh, yeah. Technically, there are two <laughs> because there is the, <laughs> the team constructed. Okay, team constructed. Okay, yeah. I was, that, I was looking at the invitational thing on the page. My bad. <laughs> um, so, team constructed is again another new thing that they're actually trying to do. So, in February uh, in Baltimore, there's going to be a team constructed event, and that is um, three people on a team. One of them will play standard, one of them will play modern, and one of them will play legacy. Oh, I want to go to that. That's so bad. sweet. Yeah, uh, we have no one that can play legacy. Uh, Mike, you would be our default legacy person. Okay, I can play some legacy. I, I, I would, can do that. I, I could can. probably be. I would probably be the standard person. I could, I could play Delver in legacy. Right? Like, I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, you could play you Delver in legacy. You want to. So I can play some. I can play some shardless though. I think. Right. I think that the problem more more of the problem is I, I probably can't go to Baltimore. So oh. well, Jordan wanted to go. Unfortunate. Yeah, there you go. Unfortunate. <laughs> we'll take that. So, so that's a cool thing that they they <laughs> they are they're trying to do, which is um, you know pretty awesome all in all. Um, Columbus is getting a uh, an open pretty early in the year in January, uh, and then uh, we have Indy uh, in uh, the Midwest area in February, uh, right after Baltimore. Um, so uh, we do see, you know, about let's see through this is through June. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven events from uh, December technically, which is the Invitational, right? Yes. Uh, through June tenth and eleventh. Yeah, they do seem to be adopting the the Wizards like break through December idea, which I think is probably correct. You know, just, uh, Wizards a couple years ago tried to do like you know, the GP Christmas weekend and all those oh, events, yeah. and they had horrible. You, know, you remember uh, was it Dallas was the one that was like ice stormed? Yeah, you run into weather. Yeah, on so, top of you know just the holidays, people have other stuff going cause, on. Because even like Columbus this last year was like the first week of the new year. So uh, th- you know, honestly, it seems like a large gap, but numbers wise, it's got to make a lot of sense. I mean, heck, even our Comic Town Classics, you know, we had one early in the year in January and got crushed by the weather and you just didn't have people show up. So yeah. these make sense. Um, and uh, so uh, Dave did call out there's only going to be two invitationals um, from what we're seeing. Now is that for the entire year, correct? Yeah, so... Right. So they're actually breaking it up into only two seasons. So we have, what, four seasons now? Correct. On the SCG Tour. And we're only going to have the two invitationals per year. We currently have three seasons. Three seasons? There's only three invitationals and players champions. Oh, right, yeah, because they have the points leaders and all yes, that. I was yes, thinking yes. of uh, for the um, players' championship uh, bids, which, interestingly enough, uh, apparently they're not going to have a players' championship next year. Uh, they are not. That So I would be honest, when people are upset about that, that one makes the most sense out of any other changes to me. Right, because it's only for like 16 people or whatever. Uh, if you don't remember, that's the event that spawned the famous... I don't know who Jeff Hoagland tweet is from Matt Sperling, right? <laughs> and honestly, that's the truth. Like both years of it, like I, I barely watched any of it. The format, even though it was better this last year, was still not really that intuitive. So you had this weird esoteric formatting. You had players who were only known on the tour, and that's what they were trying to do was build those players up. But you know, it, it some of those people have just sort of disappeared in the last year. So you're not seeing the carryover. Um, the race has been fun. For some of the seasons, some of the seasons is just done immediately, uh, it, and it's just been I don't know. It, it, it I don't think it was doing what they wanted it to do, and it was a, this very niche, like you know, sixteen person event that awarded so much money there. They can you know free it up to you know increase the payout. You know, the two there's only two invitationals, but they're paying out the same amount of money that three invitationals are paying out. So like. You, you hopefully they'll pour the money that direction uh, as opposed to like it, it just makes sense like if you especially if like if we read this as like maybe they're hurting in some way then yeah taking away that one ridiculous event probably helps a lot yeah um so we also have changes in the oh wait did you have something else to add I, to I was just going to make the point that um i i think what they what they may be doing is kind of shifting towards more of the the team focus so yeah you, you, you i, I may mention that earlier uh, in our in our uh, show chat yeah, I mean, yeah, you talk about building up players, but it's like they could still do that, but kind of do it through teams. And we see, you know, even Wizards is kind of adopting this with the, you know, the team uh, race that they're trying to do um, and, you know, the Pro Tours. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Sorry. All right, well, game seven tomorrow. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's rough. Yeah. It's a rough one. Addison Russell just hit a grand slam. Um, <laughs> as my, my wife being sad and indignant as well. Oh man! I right. all right. Well. You can turn it off. Nope. Okay. That's not how this works. <laughs> all right. You, you There's always the that chance. You fight yeah. for the pain. 
All right. All right. So uh, back to magic. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they may be um, they may be trying to focus on the on the team aspect a little bit. So uh, anyway, if that's what they're doing, then it makes sense to cut the players' championship. So I'm not that sad about it. Yeah, me neither. But, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I mean, it, it puts them more in line with more sort of like esports centric sort of things, yeah. where the focus isn't necessarily always on the, the 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 player, but the team. I'm more sad about. The all well, both invitationals now are going to be in Virginia, um, you know, closer to the Star City headquarters. I don't know what what city was it in. Did they say it's in Roanoke. In Roanoke, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's that's awkward for me since I won't be able to travel as much next year. I was really looking forward to the Columbus Invitational next year, um, since that's local, but probably not going to be able to make it to Roanoke. So. Yeah, that, that's going to be interesting. Now, it says in there that they hired um, this entertainment company, a big lick entertainment, uh, to sort of h- help them run these things. And I'm interested because like, I feel like if they start turning their invitationals into like these sort of esports like arena events, because that, that's where I see this going, that makes a lot of sense then to keep it local. So, yeah, it stinks because, you know, Roanoke is not exactly close, but only two of them a year. I feel like, you know, if you're qualified, you can spin at least one of them. So. Yeah, yeah, you can you can try to to make the the you know journey out, um, and then the the classics are going to be changing um, as well. Um, and, and basically, what we're going to see from this is overall less legacy classics, um, and, and the classics are going to try to morph into um, potentially rebound events, which is you know. Oh, as, which is to say that you can, you know, if you have a modern open, then you also will have a modern classic, which will be nice. So yes. you can, you know, pack one deck for the weekend. If you don't date to the open, then you still have a way to play your, your modern deck the next day at a, you know, at a high level tournament. Yeah, so all of the standard and modern opens will have both standard and modern classics. Yes. And then the, the legacy open will have a legacy and a modern classic yes. to offer for Sunday. So um, I, I like that change. Uh, it, it does suck for legacy players. Um, I know a lot of people have been upset about that. And I mean, I feel like the writing's been on the wall for years now and people just don't want to accept it. <laughs> um, I mean, the fact that matters, you know, Star City is a business and they're going to do what is best for them and what makes the most sense and makes the most money. I mean, modern is clearly uh, just continues to grow in popularity. So hot right now. I mean, standard is always going to be standard. You know, that's it's the standard format. So, you know, they're always going to have a lot of standard events, and it just makes more sense for them to have modern. Um, I mean, as much as people might gripe about the format, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I do feel for for legacy players and and. Um, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, well, Legacy is such a great format, and I don't think anybody's saying that Legacy is bad. Um, I think, you know, Legacy is, is a very, you know, skill-testing format, and a lot of people love it, um, but just the raw numbers just don't agree. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah. I think uh, a lot of people like uh, Twitter and Reddit both have been pretty angry about this. And I think uh, you know Nick Miller on it was one of the you know, one of the uh, or the the, the off camera coverage guy for Star City. You know, said you know you know you've got Legacy this weekend. Put your money where your mouth is, right? If you think we made a wrong decision, show us. Watch it. Show up to it. Because at the end of the day, you know people get angry about these things, but they're not going. They they're, they're not. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, and, and, and kudos, we'll talk about Eternal Weekend. Eternal Weekend had a lot of people playing Legacy. But, like, that's just one major event in a year, and they only had 600 people. Like, that's, it, it is a huge premier event, and only 600 people. And you could say 600 is a lot of people. It is. <laughs> to be fair, like, the, the Legacy GPs usually do get a ton of people. They do, they because out. of that one big event a year. But, I mean, for the Opens, like, the, you know, the GPs are just trying to sell Magic in general, and they do a good job of that. The Open is, you know, as you can see, they're trying to sell Star City. And if Legacy's not doing that anymore, then Legacy's not doing it anymore. So... Yeah, I, I, you know, if you're upset, fix it the way you can, but keep playing locally. You know, we, we've we watched in Columbus a really you know competitive and fun legacy. You know, we we we, you know, we had men on uh, you know a couple months ago and talked about how you had a really healthy legacy community here, even in Columbus, and now the events don't fire. So it's yeah, not, there are stores know, that used to have legacy all the time. Yeah, that just don't even. Like Star City's fire. not making this up. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it is what it is. And I've even, uh, even online, I've seen people argue, well, it's like, 
Well, I mean, how much does it really cost them to run, you know, a legacy classic on Sunday? They could still do that, but it's like, sure, but if you're running a legacy classic, then you're not running either a modern or a standard classic, which both and, make more money, and both, are, yeah, both are going to bring in more players, more interest. So it's not so much that they could do it, but by doing that, they're not going to be able to run a more lucrative event, you know, event right. in another format. So that's the problem. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, it stinks for legacy players. I got, I got nothing else on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have obviously on here and so we're not huge legacy fans, but anytime a player doesn't get to play the format they want, that's upsetting. But I, I still think like there's a, there's a line in the sand there where it's like, Hey, I feel bad for you, but if you're surprised, you're lying to yourself. So right. I, think, I think, you know, we've got to, we've got to meet in the middle there. Yeah. I mean, as the game becomes more popular, like those cards become more scarce, which drives up the cost of your format. Your format is cost prohibitive to join. People aren't going to do it. They don't want to. Um, and, you know, you can show me a bunch of graphs that say, like, legacy over time is cheaper than standard. You're, it's very true, but it's a different kind of investment, yeah. and uh, it, it's upfront versus over time. <laughs> and you are very correct, but uh, it's much easier to invest over time yeah, than it uh, is upfront. You can keep shouting into the void of Reddit and all those sorts of things. Uh, if your logic was going to resonate with people, we wouldn't have credit card debt in this com- or in this country. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> I think, I mean, ultimately what it all comes back to is, is the reserve list. I mean, we've talked about it on here. As long as the reserve list is a thing, and, and that means for, by all accounts it will be, then Legacy is going to be a format that not a lot of people are going to be able to get into. And, and let's be honest, it, it's a tough sell to tell. You know, in years past, you could say, yeah, yeah, well, the same time you have the standard deck, you may build a Legacy deck. It's like, well, but they only had two yeah, opens play in last like three season. Events, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, at some point, like you're, say, like, you're going to say, oh, well, your lands are just going to keep going up. Maybe. Okay. Until they, the bottom falls out. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. So. Um, so there's uh, going to be no more states. Um, states is going to yeah. Be we going are now away. just one big landmass. <laughs> um, <laughs> Correct. Um, but there are going to be regionals. So there's going to be season one regionals and season two regionals. So those still exist. Yeah, and with states, um, Pete cited difficulty in getting, you know, fifty different tournament org- organizers able to run it, um, and you know, all all the states have to be involved and. Uh, I guess they're running into issues where it, you know, it was conflicting with maybe other tournaments that they had planned on running or other even other games that they had. Um, so eh, that that that's unfortunate. I mean, that was a, a cool tournament to play in. Um, in my opinion, it wasn't as cool as when they had, you know, when Wizards uh, um, backed states. We had like the real state championships. That's <laughs> that's yeah. I won a couple of those, but you know, it's. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. You yeah, know. no, I, I totally, I totally buy that reasoning. Like people are like, oh well, the blank blank states, and it's just like, yeah, well, like w- when you have like three different companies running different state yeah. championships, it kind of takes takes away from the luster. It's like, <laughs> oh well, you were, oh you were yeah. the the TCG states champion. Oh, that's like the fake. By the way, TCG TCG states happened last week where you could have gotten sweet hats. Uh, <laughs> that's actually the best prize. Yeah, I, I just want you to understand, like all the people complaining about these Star City prizes. Remember, it could be TCG player. Oh, man, remember when like TCG player actually like used to be a thing? I mean, when I, had 50, I, I still have my game? hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a hat. Oh man, that was that's still like my favorite picture that uh, like, ever. Is all of us wearing our hats except for David didn't have a hat. Oh, <sighs> I didn't plan it though. So. Uh, do you want to talk the IQs real quick too? Yeah. So um, IQs are going to be changing. Um, there's going to be like no regular IQs basically anymore. So they're all going to be what super IQs technically. Um, where they have cash prizes and they have actual points that they are going to be awarding now, um, which is a shift. Um, so we we do see you know points sort of uh, getting passed out again, as opposed to not not, not many. <laughs> no, not a lot. You know, we're looking at you know fourth through first getting points instead of you know a whole top eight or something like that. So, um, and um, you know that's that's pretty much uh, as far as that goes. You know, kind of the big change with that. Yeah, I can see. I, I, I honestly, I think it's a it's a pretty big deal. I, I haven't played in an IQ in six months. Uh, essentially, when they got rid of points for the first time, uh, because there's no reason to grind them. They have terrible prizes. Typically, you, you pay thirty bucks to get a top eight payout, where you get six packs if you're in eighth place. 
it, it just for someone who's actually grinding, there's little incentive to do this. Now they, they you know in our local ones they fired, but they have not been what they were. You know what I mean? And like I have to feel like that package that they were selling was becoming you know sort of rough for the stores to keep buying, uh, and also just rougher you know Star City who just like yeah the interest has gone down. This makes a lot more sense. The prizes are better. You can earn some points for them. Um, this, like, I can already say as a person who, who is the target demographic, I am now more likely to play in an, in an IQ than I was, you know, before. Now, the other question that you are going to have to ask yourself, not necessarily in our community, uh, but, uh, at a greater, like how many stores are, have the availability to hand out a grand, you know, for, for every IQ that they run? Yeah. Honestly, I can't answer that question if I, I don't know the pricing structure of what you were paying for the kits in the first place. Yeah. So I, I'm not totally sure. Um, but I guess we'll see. I hope they continue to do it. I, I mean, I hope so too. I know. I mean, I'm fairly confident the Comic Town has has been very good at you know being able to have and run uh, you know super IQ level tournaments. But right. there are a lot of there are a lot of um, you know other stores out there that probably can't keep doing this, you know, and will lose the you know weekly tournaments that you know they they potentially had in the IQ scene. So we'll uh, we'll kind of see what happens with that. Yeah, we've been. We've been lucky to have uh, a store like Comic Town that's able to consistently run those events. Yes. Um, so, you know, if uh, if that means less tournaments, you know, for other areas, and I'm sorry, <laughs> you should move to Columbus and go to Comic Town. <laughs> 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 um, I, I do want to give a shout out to the uh, the next uh, creature collection card for for game nights. Uh, it's uh, definitely a squirrel uh, yeah. by the name of uh, Squeaky Cheeky. <laughs> Uh, Acorn but breaker, but there's no Matt giving out for game day for that one. This is that is uh, that is it's uh, criminal. That is a criminal offense. I, I'm I, gonna have to admit. Uh, but Squeaky Jiggy, it's great. It's a great name. Oh yeah, Squeaky Jiggy is great. It's a great name. Oh Squeaky man, Squeaky Jiggy and I go way back. <laughs> um, and then uh, anything else in these changes? I know that there were changes for Star City Games points in the um, you know seasonal standings or anything like that. No, I mean those things I think are sort of for a, a, the sort of niche market there. Uh, if you are interested in the point changes, please go check it out on their store page. Uh, and I also encourage you if you have uh, thoughts on the changes, comment. Uh, Hopefling does tend to read these comments. You know, you know, uh, you've seen Cedric Phillips being very engaged on Twitter discussing these things. If you have a question, ask him. But I mean it like this. Ask a question. If your if your question is, "Hey, you pieces of blank beep, zip, doop, 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 right? Why'd you get rid of Legacy? I loved Legacy. You're not going to get responses that you want. But if you have a legitimate question, you can be a civil human being. I I know that we haven't done that recently, as a nation, but it's time for the healing to begin. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of everything that's that's shaken down, and uh, I, I've seen a uh, a lot of uh, opinions one way or another about you know what's going on with this. A lot of people um, saying that the uh, the world's falling and uh, you know the sky's falling, you know, and uh, everything like that. Well, to be fair, there there was some Pete did talk about you know potentially you know we could we could have seen the end of the SVG tour and that's kind of crazy to think about cuz at this point it's been a staple um for i don't know what 7 years right yeah maybe um and you know Cedric Phillips has been a, a big you know a big part of it growing as well as it did i mean it did exist before Cedric was a regular commentator but it wasn't nearly as big as it is now uh, and it's kind of crazy to think like you know what what would it be like if you know Star City just didn't have a an SCG tour. That would we be get back to just GPs with you know half, uh, you know half, half of them being streamed. You know, like yeah. every third week, something. Yeah, I mean, we we could talk about a bunch of different reasons for why that's set up like that. I do think that they overestimated how popular two day opens would be, and they just haven't seen the numbers that they've wanted. Um, we'll see how these changes uh, go out with that. But I, I, I also think it goes back. We had that question. You know, we had a question uh, of the week that was from you know uh, one of our listeners a couple weeks ago. We talked about like how Columbus had some lower turnouts, and it's it's interesting to see because the game is still growing. You know, Hasbro's uh, quarterly report will tell you that the game is still growing and earning a lot of profits. But it is interesting to see that maybe the competitive market is getting a little smaller. I wonder what would happen if they brought back the price to well, it used to be forty. Yeah, uh, with the one day events. Now it's fifty for the two day events. Yeah, I so I have I have a feeling that at some point they will have to announce like a a, a restructuring of prizes. But man, uh, the same people that like you went after Kent, they don't do very good at dealing with things when they feel like they're getting less value, even if they have no intention of ever uh, engaging in it. Mm. Oh, the internet! 
Yeah, I, uh, for most things, uh, uh, you don't really uh, uh, you, you don't really see uh, costs going down. So I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that as far as that goes. Right. Uh, as we've seen with GPs, the cost just keeps going up and up and up. So. Well, what the idea is, I mean, are you going to pull in more people to kind of offset? Probably not. I don't, I don't even know what the numbers would have to look like. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done the math on probably that. Probably not. Maybe we should stop trying to be economists here and <laughs> yeah, continue on with yeah. the podcast. We right. slowed down a little bit. Sorry, everybody. No, you're fine. Well, we don't have a lot of like tournament stuff to talk about, really. Yeah, that's fine. But we're still we're a little bruised here. Burp. Yeah. All right. Hey, what's going on at Comic Town this weekend? So Comic Town has a uh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, sorry, whoa. that was too early. My apologies. A uh, a wonderful uh, PPTQ uh, this Saturday, uh, of course, November fifth, uh, with over a thousand dollars in store credit up to up for grabs. Whoa! <laughs> Say what? <laughs> that is <laughs> that is many dollars. So I believe the entry is what thirty. I think it's twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Look at even, that. Even better. Uh, and um. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like four hundred dollars worth of uh, store credit to first, first place. place. Let me tell you, I, I said this last week. I'll say it again. Like, forget just singles. Like, I don't get you a lot of singles, but I like that kind of st- like that amount of store credit lets you just roll in like sleeves and everything else you want for so long. It's so nice. And um, wish I could play in it. Uh, no, you're already qualified though. So I know I'm not allowed to play it. Get over it. <laughs> hey, if you didn't want to be qualified, then you should have just not played. In your eight-man PPTQ. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, this is a 10 a.m. tournament, so tournament starts at 10 a.m., players' meeting starts at then. We have, they, they'll, they'll have, you know, a 9 a.m. Uh, uh, deck registration um, per the huge. Um, so show up early, get your deck registered, and um, it is going to be standard. Uh, so make sure you are bringing the correct deck to the PPTQ. Twenty-five dollar entry. Twenty-five. Oh, we, we met in the, the middle. middle. Yeah. Met in the middle. So yeah, twenty-five dollar entry for the actual tournament. So um, I'm gonna try to be out there and, and be playing. I have no idea what I want to play. Uh, we'll talk about standard here in just a moment. So uh, maybe I'll uh, find something I like there. So, um, but first we we just want to briefly touch on the uh, you know huge tournament that actually happened in our backyard in Columbus, which was Eternal Weekend. It happened. Um, it did happen, and uh, Mike and I went. And uh, we played us uh, uh, the the hardest to fire draft format at the actual tournament, which was Kaladesh. Uh, let, let's be honest here, though. Side events weren't exactly jumping. In they were not popping direction. off. So, and I say huge as in like significance, but not necessarily in attendance. No, there weren't a lot of people there. Now, granted, we went on Sunday. Neither of the we major did, events were there. Yeah, we did go on Sunday, so they were just doing like the top eights for for major events. Maybe Saturday was more popping. Well, I know Saturday I, had six hundred. Uh, players for Legacy. I'm not sure what Vintage had, which like that's an okay number, but it's it's not. I don't know. It's not great. Yeah. So, um, but that's all we did. And um, do we want to talk about the? Give just give a quick shout out to the to the winners of the respective tournaments. Sure. So Vintage, we had uh, Joseph Bogard was our winner playing uh, a Landstill deck. Now, I know next to nothing about Vintage. But that's he second would, place. Yeah, they posted... So they posted the top eight lists oh. after Swiss. Oh. So... Okay. Yeah. So uh, Joseph Card Bogard, Titan, please stop being garbage. I'm going to be very yeah. honest. It was but, impossible <laughs> to find these lists without going through like Reddit or somewhere else to get the link to it. They're not associated with your event on here, and now they're not even actually in order. Because they are, yeah, I'm sorry, after Swiss. Great. Thank you. You really helped us. Um... <laughs> So yeah, it was Joseph Bogard defeated? Um, was it uh, Brian J- P? Jacob Corey in uh, the finals? Brian P? Uh, no, it Brian P doesn't it have a last Brian name. P. It's just Brian P. Um, <laughs> what you know about Brian P? Uh, not enough. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he has to stay hidden for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> I watched a little bit of the coverage just because I'm. You know, I don't play vintage, but it's kind of interesting to see you know the power and it's it's eh, it's all right. I like watching LSV play vintage online, yeah. and that's about it. But I think I just like watching it, LSV play Magic in general. There, there was a sweet uh, new deck out there that used uh, paradoxical. Is it paradoxical outcome? outcome? Yeah, the the, the uh, Reduke uh, Stormless. Yeah, yeah, Reduke played yeah played a list, and um, I know uh, Stephen Menendian also played a list with mentors. Um, that LSV later streamed. It was just, oh man, it was so <laughs> sick. Like you just get a mentor out and play, 
cast Paradox Cloak, um, return a bunch of mocks to Strian, make like 30 monks. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, just, it's fun. Um, anyway, but that deck didn't win. The uh, Landstill deck won. So. Oh. Um, and then Legacy, the winner was uh, Oren Kremen. He was playing a uh, Thespian Stage go- uh, Dark Depths deck. Um, which was pretty interesting. It was just black green. Yeah, just a, a black green uh, hex mage death deck. Cool. Which, so uh, he defeated miracles, which I know everybody's happy about. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout so out that to was, uh, that was legacy. Yeah. Shout out to Jarvis U top eighty. Yeah, Jarvis U uh, top eight. Uh, not with lands, which is kind of the deck he's been. Yeah, it known looks like for. some Delver here. Yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah, it's cool. I, I, would, I would look over to see where the cards are in this, but this is a text-only format on a Card Titan website that literally sells all of the cards in these lists. Uh, and yet you can't click on that card to buy it from the website in case you wanted to emulate the deck. That's really weird. Card Titan, seriously, get it together. I'm not even kidding. You are a Titan of nothing. <laughs> Let alone cards. All right. That's enough time talking about Eternal Weekend. Shout out to everyone who went and attended. I hope Sorry. you. I'm glad you had fun. You had some sweet playmats. That Russian poor playmat was sweet. Oh yeah, in the library that, of Alexandria oh, playmat so with the original art. Oh, oh man. Apparently oh. those didn't ship though. We were told by a vendor there that those oh. did not ship. Uh, so then when they do eventually come in, they have to be uh, shipped out to individuals who get them, uh, and the uh, the TO gets to eat the cost. Yeah, I'm sure that won't be costly or anything. No, not yeah, at all. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about some GPS. And they were all standard. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is GP Warsaw. Uh, it was uh, won by... Uh, welcome back, buddy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. A little Why? welcome back. <laughs> Why? What's what's this man's name? It, uh, it, uh, all right, I'll, I'll take Gab, it. No, I got it. I'm going to okay. struggle through it, all right? Gab, Gabrielius? Gabrielius? Uh, Gabrielius. I like Gab- Gabrielius. And then Kaklauskas. Good. Okay. Proud That's pretty of you. good. It's pretty good. We did it. Sorry, Gabrielius. He was playing Blue White Flash as the uh, uh, as the you know winning deck. Um, defeated uh, what I assume was a green black deck in the finals. Yes. Okay. Fair. I had a you know I mean, you a like one a, in six chance of getting that right. right. No, a, 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 a one in seven, six, one in seven uh, chance. Yeah. A si- well, technically, what a six and eight chance <laughs> of oh, yeah, getting yeah. it right. Six out of seven. Chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah six out of seven. Oh, gee, even better odds. Yeah, so yeah, if you didn't know, there were yeah six uh, green black decks, black green Delirium decks. Uh, there is a little bit of variation. There's the like the aggro version that plays uh, the mana creature. Um, sorry, I don't have Death Cap Cultivator. Is the mana creature or the energy mana creature? The energy one. Okay. Yeah, the uh, Servant of the Conduit, yes. sorry. And uh, they also play uh, Catacomb Scepters. So this is kind of like the list that uh, Efro played at the Pro Tour. It did pretty well. Um, and then you have like the standard black-green list with the uh, you know, Traverse the Open Wall package and Emrakul and kind of the, the rock style. Sure. But uh, yeah, Blue-White Flash took it down. Um, not surprisingly, those you know, Blue-White Flash and black-green decks were the most popular by a lot. Yeah, we, they're, they're yeah both, when Dave and I broke that down last week, it was, uh, woo! Well, they were both, like, over 30% in day two of uh, Warsaw. So. Yay! Gross! Um, the other list, uh, actually, in the top eight here was, was the one that I liked. Uh, it was uh, Andreas Gans's, uh red-black aggro. Yeah. So he's just playing, like, a yeah a super uh, super aggro deck here, playing uh, four Blood Hall Priests, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, have multiple ways to discard that. Uh, you know, yeah, this is the second week in a row. The Blood Hall Priest is starting to show up. Another top eight for Blood Hall Priest. So uh, yeah. get them out of your bulk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> I think Chapin actually called that as like being like a sleeper card. Chapin called most of Kaladesh a sleeper card. <laughs> well, no, that was in uh, that was in Rise. Oh, oh sorry, I'm sorry, Eldritch Moon. You're right. Yeah, my apologies. Um, I, my point still stands as reasoning for why I don't know if I, I care, but sure. Um, but yeah, so uh, I guess uh, red black aggro is a, a thing that you can do. Theoretically, right. I, I mean, I played the red black the zombies version of it, but it seems you know like fine. They still got them sweet bowmat couriers delivering some mail. Yep. Did you want that parcel post? I don't like that card. I, just yeah, whatever's you know, it's cool. 
I, I guess if you like have like a double fiery temper in your hand, you're more inclined to want to sack it earlier. But mm. it still seems again, Thraven Inspector still being the best one drop in the format still makes that card feel awkward. Yeah, I mean if you're on the play, like it's not the worst things you can get in a hit and then like at some point cash in for two cards. Yeah, like, but yeah, that's still not. The best. Uh, Bloodhall Priest is still a cool forty nine cents on StarCityGames.com. Oh jeez. So. By all means, buy in now while the iron is <laughs> still ice cold. There's a uh, I don't know how much you're really going to be gaining. I don't, I don't know if that card's going to jump to a dollar. If it does, though, yeah, then you you Woo! did it. All the boys, congratulations. <laughs> so uh, kind of funny. So uh, Tomas Hendricks uh, finished ninth with uh, an X O four record. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> dealed undefeated uh, finished ninth. <laughs> Does he on X O four? So he'd be what eleven O and four. Yeah. So he doesn't get to go to the PT either. Uh, he was already gold. Oh, okay. As, as it turns out, okay. but yeah, he would. Yeah, had he not been already gold, then he would not. Have been gold. <laughs> That's right. unfortunate. Which is awkward. Um, I've been there in the uh, the four draw bracket. Um, it's happened to me before. It's not fun. It's it's pretty miserable. <laughs> like you know how miserable that the ties in the NFL are. Like nobody wants that. Like nobody wants a, a tie. Right. You don't want four draws. You don't even really want one draw, to be honest. But four draws is just yeah, drains gross. your soul. <laughs> it drains yeah. your soul. Yeah. Oh man, it's like an essence extraction, if you will. <laughs> yeah. mm. Eh? Mm. It's a, a soul mm. feast. Uh, uh, uh. My, I, personally, if I'm going to have a feast, I want it to be of the unicorn. But mm. these are all fine. But uh, yeah, you had Marcio Carvalho finishing in tenth. Um, yeah, there were some. Other names out here, Gregor Kowalski, 12th with uh, Blue White Flash. Just a ton of black, green, delirium, and Blue White Flash. That's pretty much what you're going to see. Yeah. Uh, just to sin, the Indians have scored a run. They are only down by six runs. 7-1. Hey, hey so. there's still time. It's only the fourth inning. That's true. Um, yeah, it, it's just so crazy to think, like, when we take a look at the Pro Tour and, like, what happened and just how – how everything's just like shifted to like these two archetypes as being like, oh, this is just what you what you play. Uh, it's and you know when you even take a look at the next you know highest performing deck, which is red white vehicles showing up in in the day two minute game, it's like not even close to the the numbers that blue white flash and black green have brought about. Um, and you know we can talk about you know uh, the next GP. You know we can talk about the GP. You know Santiago, but. It's a lot of the same, uh, which is pretty shocking, um, and it feels like these decks like just came out of nowhere. Like Redbot Vehicles was like the hot thing, and then the Pro Tour happened, and we had all these other sort of decks come out, and then it's just like, oh no, it's just these two decks that like. Hey, but, I, I, good. but good thing we have this um, the sweet new rotation that oh. happens <laughs> where they they rotate out quicker. Yeah, um, about that, about that. Uh, oh, wait, wait, they repealed that? Yeah, correct. Oh. How, how much do you have to pay for X to repeal that? Like, 18 months? Like X equal 18? <laughs> yeah. Let's draw that, that, I mean, that's a lot of mana. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> because, I repeal mean... Repeal is a magic card that bounces things. So, like, Look you'd have to, like, evaluate that in, like, the number of turns. So it would be, like, the number of, like, time stretches <laughs> or something like that. So it would be, like, a lot. Many manas. Anyway. But, um... Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to point out that if this does nothing... And I, and I don't know how Wizards evaluates this, but at some point you have to realize that, like, we we literally said this back back in the original Innistrad, but Flash is a really dangerous mechanic. Like, every time there's lots of things with Flash in the format, that deck is good. And I include, you know, Collected Company in the, the Flash category because it yeah. gave multiple creatures Flash. I mean, that's... That's just what happens. You know, you you can set up small creatures. Yeah, you, you know, Gideon obviously is. We, you know, we said back in Battle for Zendikar is the best card probably in that entire block, uh, and, and just you know is great. Um, but man, like when you can just set up your game and then you get to sit on instant speed counterspell creatures. You know what I mean? You know, and then then Avazin come in and save your whole board. Like, yeah, even a removal spell and White gets to be instant, and it's probably one of the best removal spells in the format now. You know, with the Drokus command, you know, making that exit, it's. I don't think this deck is by any means unbeatable, but it, it, you know, as it was mentioned you know, last week and you know, many times before, people love to play these kind of decks. And if you keep allowing them to have, you know, especially in white, in a color that like really doesn't need to keep having this many flash creatures, like it, it actually doesn't make sense how much flash white has gotten in recent years, uh, at least to me. But 
it, it, it's frustrating. People are going to keep building those decks. Now, I, I think they can be beaten, but you're already seeing a metagame that's pretty heavy back and forth between the two archetypes. So I, I, I don't know. In my mind, I don't, I don't know what you do about this. <laughs> you can't see a deck like just stepping in and be able to be both. Yeah, it's, it's really gonna be rough. hard for yeah. It's gonna be hard. I mean, like if you you look at like the Jeskai control deck and the list, the control list that were so good at the PT. Like, look at Jeskai control. It wants to play like a flash deck, right? But it does. It can't get aggressive enough to beat the Delirium decks because the Delirium decks have the better, the literal end better game. end game. Well, yeah. I think like uh, just the the blue white flash decks are just set up well to beat. And yeah. that's why you haven't seen control since the Pro Tour. No, they just control three percent of the meta game. You know, you can't you you can't be reactive in this format. The turn two plays are so powerful, and then like your flash spells let you play catch up. So it's just I I, I don't know I don't know how you how you fight in this format. Um, I, I will still say that uh, even you know any of the creature based forms of uh, delirium have um, their their smugglers copters, and so does the flash decks. So maybe that's still something to look at, but I don't know. Um, it's frustrating when you don't have a quicker rotation to look at, and this 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 seems like it could end up being a perfect storm for uh, for wizards here. Yeah, I know it, it's still early, you know, relatively early in the format, but this kind of reminded me a lot of Mono Black Devotion and yeah. Mono Blue Devotion, where those were pretty much the only decks. Now, now granted, we're not really that far away from another set. Uh, and Aether, you know, Aether uh, Revolt may, you know, we always do that, but Aether Revolt may bring some stuff. And we do have a lull of events after Thanksgiving, essentially. So um, maybe we won't have to deal with this format being like that for very long, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, only time will tell. Um, so uh, we do at least want to give a shout out to the winner of uh, uh, GP Santiago, which is John. Oh, you had such a great first Jacob, name, Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> John Ch- uh, Chavaria. Yeah, yeah, Chavaria. Uh, also playing Blue White Flash. So uh, <laughs> it, it is sea of you know uh, green black Blue White Flash still you know comes out on top. Yeah. And, but- um, Yo, know, I I guess it is something to you know know. I know that this was like uh, all the you know the best performing standard lists in the Pro Tour were also blue white flash. So like this just seems like to be the you know the, the cream of the crop as far as standard decks go. Now, to be fair, in both top eights, both of the winners were the only blue white flash decks that that were in the top eight. Now yeah, there we're... were still a ton. You know, if you look at the top sixty four, but um, yeah, they managed to. <laughs> both be the only blue white flashes and both <laughs> win the tournament. Um at least Santiago had a couple of like, cool decks. He had a yeah. blue, a blue red um blue red spells. Yeah, blue red uh, fever visions deck. Um, Which I am hey, I'm I'm down. I like that deck. I want to play that deck and in in like that deck maybe like even being viable is uh, is is pretty enticing. Um but this one uh, definitely seemed to be going more aggressive as four storm chaser mage instead of the four you know thing in the ice or what have you that would typically be in that slot. So they're definitely trying to you know kill people and kill people you know rather quickly. <laughs> yep. And you had a uh, blue red colossus deck. Yeah. Um, I actually hadn't taken a look at that list. Um but this is obviously, you know, working on the, you know, power of, uh, what should we call it, the Metalwork Colossus. Yep. To basically, you know, try to power out that guy, um, playing, you know, some, some glit nest cranes and stuff like that to, uh, um, you know, to find your, your cheap artifacts, get them into play, and then, you know, just start working them with them, with the Metal Colossus. This is... is... <laughs> Col- Colossi? Yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely like the coolest deck, just because you can kind of like go off. If you, if, you know, if you're able to cast a Colossus for very little, you can you know sack a Sanctum of Boogan to go get a second one, put that in play. So, yeah, it, it, you know what? It is uh, it is something that you know that you can uh, um, you know you really playing against it. Like uh, I, I I definitely played against Metal Work Colossus decks, but not necessarily this one. But uh, you uh, you definitely feel the pressure. Like oh, I need to kill them before they just make a 10 10 so yeah let's see if i can do this by the way the uh sideboard of this deck has a uh, one uh padim console of innovation which is sweet yeah it gives all your stuff hex proof gotta protect and, them somehow and if uh if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost uh, <laughs> oh. draw card is 11 uh, do you think high i don't i don't think you, i don't think anyone's beaten you at 11 i think you're might you might be drawing cards <laughs> Uh, I do also like the Tears of Alka in the sideboard. It's a card I think people kind of forgot about, but I was playing at the end of the last format as a way to kill Avacyns, and it seems pretty good against the Blue Flash deck. <laughs> it still works. You just like it because it says Tears. 
on it. I'm full of tears right now. Oh, yeah. the biggest of tears. Um, Naquin just uh, he's, I, he's he's doing it tonight. He's just uh, wow. He's, he's doing it. Wow. Mm. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here's the best part. Uh, my my the downst- tears of eloquent. My downstairs. Are uh, my downstairs neighbor. So I live in an apartment complex. Uh, is also a large Indian fan. And I can hear him cursing through the uh, floor right now. Yeah. Uh, so I feel you, buddy. At your ya. featuring your downstairs I, you uh, know what? neighbor. I, I'm not even close to upset. You, you know, you be as loud as you want. You tell him. You tell him because I'm not allowed to curse on here, according to Morgan. So, but, yeah, man. By the way, uh, just an aside, we normally record on Wednesday, and there was a potential for the game, se- you know, World Series Game Seven, to be happening on Wednesday night. So we decided that we were going to cast early this week to try to get around that possibility. Correct. And it looks like that's probably going to happen. So I guess good planning on I, I, our yeah, part. I guess so. <laughs> um. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Ignacio Garcia uh, Sepulveda, uh, Marty Vehicles showing up at, as the you know lone uh, uh, top performing uh, Marty Vehicles uh, list across the, the the GPS. So if uh, if you're into that sort of deck, there's a you know a list that you can kind of take a look at uh, as well. It's a little bit different. Some numbers are a little bit different on it, but it's pretty much got all the pieces uh, that that we've come to know from uh, these Marty Vehicle lists. So, uh, so these vehicle lists, um, do you guys feel like it's kind of going the same way that we saw uh, White Red Humans go in the last format, where like it started out really hot, it was really, you know, a, a huge player in the format, took down a couple of tournaments, and then as people kind of figured out how to beat it, it just got less and less and less? Because it kind of feels like that's what's going on here. It's still there, it's still present, but... I, I think the lists that keep doing well keep having to stretch its mana base further and further and further to find better answers. You know, here you have more cultivators, caravans, and foreign license disintegration. And, like, you know, that, it's powerful, but it, it just makes you less consistent and less explosive. You know, they have less Gideons now. You know, uh, they had Avacins, now they kind of don't have Avacin. Like, it, it, it's, I, I think it's it's a problem where the deck, you know, and you said, again, Red White Humans did the same thing. They, it was a very, very streamlined deck, and then it became more and more bloated as it tried to answer more of the format. And you had the Needle Spires and this and that. And Dave, you could attest to the fact that, you know, while it looks good on, good on paper sometimes, once you've pulled the deck that far away from what it's originally doing, you're going to have some real clunkers. Yeah, I mean, even if you slow it down by even just, you know, half a turn, um it can make all the difference. Yeah, absolutely. So. And you know, a lot of times, it, you know, the format just kind of moves away from what it was at the beginning. You know, like maybe the the vehicles deck was, I guess it wasn't very good against the control deck. So I can't even say that. Right. I was gonna say, you know, maybe they were g- good against control, but they really weren't. <laughs> so I don't know. But um, it seems like fighting through black green delirium and flash is kind of tough. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Hopefully, people will keep working in this format. There's so many sweet cards that you need to try, but the problem is, is that you know, looking back at the last few blocks, you you can identify a couple of just very, very powerful, powerful cards. You know, Gideon's, Avacyn's, and now Smuggler's Copters, and you've seen like the essentially the best deck in the format combine all of them. So, yeah, pretty much. Um, and like for the Delirium deck, like honestly, even some of the best cards in Kaladesh have just made that deck a lot easier to hit, uh, even even Delirium. So, it's um. I, I honestly I hope that we get you know a, a solid answer uh, in uh, Kaladesh to some of these you know flash threats and, if, and I hope we finally get some sort of playable piece of graveyard interaction. Like I think we need something. It. Like it, it's very frustrating to have so many decks that have no way to punish these all in you know traverse the Ulwal decks. You have no way to punish them for yep. doing that. Like you you need like a balanced format needs that. And they've they've literally the graveyard decks have been free to do whatever they want since before we had rally. Like there's nothing. To be fair, they they kind of want that. You know, you, you want yeah, you it, want the graveyard. You want the Larian to, to be, do what it's it supposed to do. It doesn't have to be, be good, though. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I mean, literally, we had Tormod's Crypt be legal for you know a couple standard formats. You know, and, and those that's not a card you actively want in your hand or on you know in, you know, in play. And like the way the Delirium decks, you're not butchering it like you would even be butchering like another type of graveyard deck. But having no way to positively interact with your opponent who is going to now just do these broken things, and where you've in fact made a format where it's easier for them to hit their enablers, it does. It, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Oh, I agree. Um, I mean, we, uh, you know, we we need something, you know, that is effective in, in what it does to the graveyard, and um, you know, hopefully we get it. And uh, let's see here. 
Anything else from these tournaments that you uh, guys wanted to uh, to talk about? Nah. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I feel like overall that standard seems to. Um, I worry about it that, that it might be like getting solved and like just getting solved too quickly, and um, it, it seems to be happening. You know more and more frequently where it's just like oh we just have the you know one or two decks show up as being like the majority of what everyone plays and everything else is lagging behind and you know you'll have some outliers show up um but man i i don't think like we we've had tournaments like this where it's just like oh yep you're either playing black green or you're playing flash or you're not playing the game and um May, that that might be hyperbole, not not all the way true, but it is kind of worrisome. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm with Mike. I hope that uh, uh, Aether Revolt does bring with it a revolution of standard, and um, we, we see <laughs> get some it. Uh, get it. We see some new exciting things. Maybe maybe Tezzeret will uh, will come up and uh, show us how it's done. Did you get it? <laughs> uh, uh, something I will say is that uh, I I am also getting frustrated where standard is. However, uh, I have yet to be bored playing a match of standard in this format. Uh, I, you know, I tried out a different deck this last week at FNM. I played the the Black Red Zombies deck. I I had a lot of fun. I I took I won FNM, which you know it's FNM, but I, you know I I still think there's a lot of interactions in this format, and a lot of fun things to do. Um, I think it's upsetting that like Flash plays into what so many people want to do, but I do think that like maybe we're seeing this at the GP level, but I think there's a lot of room in this format for it to still be fun and maintain that you know the enjoyment that I've had so far. So. Yeah. I don't. I, looking at these GPs, I feel like I should feel much more burnt out about standard than I actually do. But I actively want to play it. Like I actively want to keep playing standard. So I don't. I don't know. Maybe the format is weird. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be at F and M, so I'll try to be at F and M, and I'll, I'm going to try to be at the PBTQ as well. So I'll be playing standard as well. I just don't know what I will be playing. <laughs> oh, no idea. I was going to ask you what you're going to play. I don't know. I mean, I I, I have access to pretty much mo- most everything. Like, I could play Red White Vehicles or Marty Vehicles. Um, uh, if you want to borrow any any of the Zombies decks, I'm pretty close on all of them, but I have all Black Red. Uh, it might be very complicated for me to learn. Um, I, I had never played a, a match with the deck before Friday, and I only lost a game. So Yeah, but, like, you're better at Magic than I am, so. <sighs> Stop it. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> um, He's blushing. I have the you know pretty much I have all the blue, blue red spells list. I still have red green energy that I could I could strap in and, and play. I, I wonder uh, fever visions. You know, seeing a top eight. You know, fever visions does strike me as the kind of deck that, if designed correctly, could be good against blue white flash. Like if you're able to stick one of your visions. You know they they have their threats and Gideon is definitely an issue, but like they don't they don't have a lot of removal. You know what I mean? But, no, and so. like in, in all honesty, like if if you're wanting a deck that can probably utilize uh, Tears of Alakut pretty well, yeah, absolutely. There's there's one. You know, Lightning Axe is good against that deck. Tears of Alakut is good against that deck. Uh, honestly, outside of Avacyn, all of your three damage burn spells are good against that deck. Yeah, and, and like your I said, your um, Thermal Alchemists are relatively safe. And, you know, and easy to pressure Gideon that way. So I, I do wonder. Now, Delirium is still kind of rough, and, and you have to work for that matchup. But I, I do wonder if that's a deck that you could re-examine. You know what I mean? Um, With it showing up in top eight, it entices me for sure. Sure, sure. I mean, and it's a deck that I mean, Fewer Division is just a fun card to cast. Oh, for sure. So, and if and if like we we talk about week one, like Fewer Divisions is really bad if your opponent's playing a lot of turn one you know creatures. But if the format's a little dirtier, then. You know, Maybe it might it's be worth it. It's hard to plan for the PPTQ because people will just play what they have access to. I, and I, I will say this: people in Columbus like their black greens. Yeah, so, so. That, that that could be the the knock against it for sure. But I, I don't know what deck is necessarily like extremely good against black green. So, guess we got to figure it out. Uh, other black, black, other black green decks. <laughs> uh, I don't have access to the two best decks, so unfortunately, I will not no. be playing either of them. Well. <laughs> That's unfortunate. It, well, yeah. I'm sorry. Ain't got no Liliana's. Ain't got no Avacyn's. Just Yeah, Liliana's are still absurdly high. Yep, I still have just one. <laughs> and it's signed by Lucas Bohan. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I, the, literally, how do you not get it at this point in time? Uh, yeah, Green Black like, Delirium was 30% of both GPs. Right, but like, even like Avacyn came down to like 20 or 25. Same rarity. Sure. Um, so it's because the plans that was more open. Yeah, I guess, I guess uh, Liliana is played in modern a little bit. Yeah, well, and again, at, our Elder, Elder Moon is not nearly opened as much. Correct. As, uh, our Shadows of Inner Okay, Shadow. sure. That 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 will do it. 
Uh, not to mention the fact that if you look at, like, isn't that how that works when you look at Eldritch, Eldritch Moon? It's the same thing looking at Gideon right now in Battle for Zendikar. Like, the only card that's worth money in Battle for Zendikar is Gideon. Yeah. And if you look at Eldritch Moon, I, you know, outside of, like, Emrakul, what's really the real money? It's, it's Liliana. So, because I think even, like, what, uh, isn't uh, the spider? Uh, Ishkana's Ish- under 10 now. Yeah, Ishkana's, like, dropped a bunch. So... Yeah, I think that's why you're seeing that, unfortunately. Yeah, Ishkan has eight bucks. So Yep, pretty much. Alright. Well, uh we already talked about the PTQ. Um over the weekend we also do have an open in Baltimore and it's Legacy. Uh so uh, you know, again, if uh if Legacy is what you're passionate about and is your thing, you know, watch it. Go out and play if you can. Um you know, really show your support and try to rally behind the format. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Exactly. Um, we also have Grand Prix Dallas, which is going to be modern, which is you know pretty exciting. And Channel Fireball is actually going to have coverage of that, so you can actually, uh, you know, sit down and kind of watch some sweet, sweet modern action. And I'm going to be very honest. I'm going to check over the weekend a couple times if I can. I'm going to see how the viewers look uh, compared to the two. Uh, yeah. and, and honestly, if I can remember, maybe I'll take some screenshots too. So if modern is consistent, you know, if Channel Fireball's GP stream is consistently beating the SCG stream, I mean, I- I'm just let you know you, you you're going to have your answer. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's everything that's going to be happening over the weekend. Um, I hope to see you at the uh, Comic Town PBTQ um, and uh, you know come out to uh, to battle some standard. Um, but uh, that's everything for the show. So if you want to reach out to us, uh, we have multiple different avenues for you to do so. So we are on Twitter. We are at symbol your end step. Um, we also have an email address. It's uh, at your end step at gmail dot com. Uh, and a Facebook. So you go to Facebook, you can do a quick search for At Your Instep. Um, while you're there, do a search for uh, Comic Town Gaming Center and give them a, a, a like uh, as well. So you can you know keep in touch with uh, all the events that they do uh, you know send out. We are getting ever closer uh, to the uh, uh, last big event for the uh, you know, Comic Town Classic Series, um, which will be uh, very exciting. And um, so... Uh, if you ever want to, you know, be queued for that, there are some last chance qualifiers that are going to be happening as well. So the only way to keep in touch with those is to follow the page. Um, also, uh, you can uh, download this show. You can get us on iTunes um, or you can get us on you know, uh, Google Play um, if you are so Android inclined. And uh, also via MTG Cast. And, uh, you know, why, are at, why you'll, you are at MTG Cast? It's a great repository for other lovely shows. So go give them a listen as well. Um, but I believe that is you know, going to be everything for this week. We'll catch you guys next time, and you have a great one. Bye.